Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to parse a JSON string using the Arduino Core and the ASP32. As a target board, I'll be using an ASP32 Firebeetle board from DFRobot. So, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and it is a lightweight data interchange format. Although it can be used for many other applications, JSON is commonly used for transmitting data over the web. For example, if a client wants to send some data to a server or retrieve some data from the server, JSON is a commonly used content type. One of the big advantages of JSON is that it is a very compact format uh, when compared, for example, with XML, another commonly used data format. Nonetheless, although it's more compact, uh, JSON is still uh, as a human readable format, making uh, it very easy for us to look into the JSON and understand uh, the type of data that it is representing. So, uh, in order to make our life easier um, and to uh, use a very easy to use and uh, higher level API to parse the JSON content, we are going to use this um, library called Arduino JSON. So I'm not going to uh, explain here how to install it because it's very simple. The library is available um, using the Arduino EDA uh, Libraries Manager and I'll leave a link uh, in the description of this video uh, to a written post in my blog that explains in more detail um, how to install this library. Just before we get started looking into more detail in the, into the code, I just want to show you the JSON that we are going to parse uh, here. Uh, it's just an example testing string uh, that may represent like a sensor measurement, a temperature sensor measurement that has like a sensor type and a value uh, of that measurement and it could be uh, the data structure used in some IoT application. So looking into the actual coding, um, as, as expected, the first thing we are going to do is including the Arduino JSON.edge library um, and I'm assuming that you have already installed it. So, uh, moving on to the setup function, it will be very simple because we are going to do the parsing of the of the, our JSON string in a loop just to keep printing some stuff into the serial monitor. We could have done it just on here in the setup function, but I opted to do it in the in the Arduino main loop. So the setup function will only correspond to opening uh, the serial connection, so we can later get the results. Um, on the Arduino IDE serial monitor and then I'm just doing here a, a print just for the sake of readability uh, to give a new line after the, that garbage that sometimes is printed uh, after we open the serial, uh, the serial monitor. So, moving on to the main loop. Uh, basically, uh, if you are using the main loop, it means that this code will run um, multiple times inside the loop. Uh, but we'll analyze what happens in each iteration of, of this code. So for the sake of uh, readability, I'm, I'm uh, printing here this message indicating that the parsing of the string uh, has started. Uh, so we can clearly uh, see where each iteration of the loop begins. And after that, I'm simply declaring uh, our JSON string, the, the string that we want to parse, and that I have showed here before. I'm declaring it, sorry, this is the one I've showed here before, and now I'm declaring it here as a string. Note that I've minified, kind of minified the um, the JSON string because the parser uh, is um, can read the string in, the, in its most compact format. Uh, the parser will not need to have new lines or or, or be, be able to, doesn't need to, to to read it in a user-friendly format, so we can have a more compact format and save here some space when declaring our string. One thing that I would like to highlight is that JSON, uh, the JSON specification is kind of composed by key value pairs, um, and uh, the, the, um, the keys should be uh, enclosed in uh, quotes, and some of the values also, if they are strings, should also be enclosed in quotes. So, uh, in double quotes, sorry. So when we are specifying this JSON string, uh, we need obviously to escape the quotes that are part of the JSON uh, string. Uh, otherwise, if we don't escape them, uh, the compiler will not be able to uh, compile this code. So now that we have declared this message, uh, sorry, declared this string, one important thing to mention is that later when we are going to parse the message, um, the libraries will mutate the content of this string. So we should not 
after we perform the parsing of the message, we should not look again into this message because the parser uh, may introduce some changes in this string. Uh, this is clearly indicated in the uh, documentation of the library. So after that, after we have our message to be parsed, uh, what we'll need to do is an object of this uh, class static JSON buffer, which will act as a pre-allocated memory pool that will store the JSON um, object tree. So I'm not going to to go into much detail about how this will be. This is implemented under the hood, but since this we, this is a memory pool, uh, something that we declare beforehand, we need to specify the size of this memory pool using this template parameter. Basically, it's this value between. Uh, between the greater than and lesser than signals um, and basically this specifies the number of bytes that compose our memory pool. I will leave in the, in the description of the video a link to a tool uh, that is made available by the author of the library that helps us calculating the size of this static JSON buffer uh, taking in consideration the size of the JSON that we are expecting to parse. But to keep things simple here, I'm going to declare this three, um, 300 value, which is more than enough for the string that we are going to parse. Uh, so we don't, will not make use of that tool, but in a real application, you should take in consideration that the SP32 resources are limited. So this should be optimized as much as possible. So now that we have declared our uh, memory pool, our static JSON buffer, uh, now, parsing its content is really trivial. Basically, we just need to call this parse object method on our static JSON uh, buffer object and pass as input, as you can see here, the string that contains uh, the JSON content that we want to parse. So, this method will uh, return a reference to an object uh, of class JSON object that we will store and we will use in a minute to uh, access our content. So you should store it uh, in some variable so we can use it later. So the first thing we are going to do before trying to access the values is checking if there were any errors in the parsing procedure because there may have been some problem due to the memory pool not having um, enough size or other kind of stuff. So we should call this success method uh, on our static JSON, sorry, on our JSON object reference. Um, and it, this value should be true, indicating that uh, the parsing was successfully performed. If it returns false, it means some uh, parsing error has occurred. So this is just error handling. We print uh, a message indicated that something failed and do a small delay. But in our uh, simple example, this should not happen. So now, in order to access the actual values parsed, uh, we need to use the subscript operated, uh, which are basically the square brackets, uh, and basically we go to our JSON object uh, reference, and we use the square brackets, and inside the square brackets we put a string uh, with the name of the JSON parameter that we want to obtain. Remember that, as I've said before, um, the JSON uh, the JSON string is composed by keys. As you can see here, this is a key and values, this is a value. So we can use the name of these keys, the sensor type and the value. Um, we can use these values uh, inside the subscript operator, basically the square brackets, to get the value for this key. So in our case, we know that the sensor type, and we need to know this uh, beforehand, obviously, because when we are working, uh, working with JSON, typically, uh, there's a predefined data structure that we are expecting when exchanging data uh, with other application. So we know beforehand that this sensor type is a string, so we declare it as a string, as you can see here. And we know that this value, this value uh, key, uh, will correspond to an int, so we assign it to an integer variable. After that, we'll simply print uh, the values we have obtained uh, from parsing the, the JSON string. We'll print it. We are printing here the sensor type, and we are printing here the sensor value. And then we are just, for the sake of, of readability, printing here a new line and wait uh, five seconds until we repeat the procedure. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, very simple. Uh, the author of this library did a very, very good job 
um, of handling something that is considerably complex, which is parsing um, parsing JSON content, and it made it really, really um, easy, uh, easy to use. So if now uh, we upload the code, uh, I've already done it, uh, and I'm opening here the Arduino with the SEO monitor. I'm just going to res reset my my SP32, and as you can see here, it is printing the values that were original in the JSON string. So the sensor type was temperature and the sensor value was 10. So these are the values after uh, we parse the string. And this will be very useful in future tutorials where we are going to be handling uh, exchange of messages between a client and the server hosted in the SP32. Uh, so having the ability to parse JSON, one of the content types commonly used um, uh, commonly used between client and server interactions, uh, it's very useful. Uh, hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.